Okay. So, this is my first time trying to go live. Uh, I wanted to quick discuss the crazy amount of seeds that I have right now. And uh, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Uh, I will go ahead and let it play, like, <clears throat> let you see a replay of it. Um, I won't go ahead and take it down, so if you get a chance to uh, watch it, that's great. Leave a comment. Um, I have... Uh, it open on my phone too so I can you know look down if people are commenting and we can uh, kind of go back and forth if you have any questions go ahead and ask me so basically when I first started in 2020 I had no idea about the different you know uh, Baker Creek and Mary's heirloom seeds and Haas and all, all the different companies that are out and about and around I pretty much only knew um, just your Home Depot, Lowe's. So a lot of the seeds that I first started with were the Ferry Morris. So I picked up, you know, a bunch of different lettuce and kale and carrots, the beans. That was kind of my first endeavor with, with growing from seeds. Um, all of my tomatoes and early cucumbers uh, were all from uh, starts that we picked up at Lowe's. So this season I'm going more the seed route. Um, I went ahead, I did start my squash and zucchini from seeds this year, which was very, very cool. Um, <clears throat> so I just kind of dumped a bunch of, out here on the table. I picked up uh, this pak choy and other lettuce and kales from a local seed store. Um, that was a great resource for me. Um, they went ahead and they have <clears throat> different fertilizers. They have the vermiculite. Um, they had the seed starting trays. Um, so that was, that was a great find. Um, and I've been going back to them. Um, also the little tags for labeling the plants. Um, and price wise, they're pretty comparable with say an Amazon. So for me, I'd rather you know, make sure that I'm giving them the the few dollars and, uh, you know, kind of keep it in the state. So then I found out about um, this company, The Little Shop of Seeds. And in July, I went crazy. I picked up lavender and, and that's something I plan on doing and growing a lot more this season is flowers uh, to help with the pollination, corn, um, <laughs> eggplant. I'm trying to show the seeds too, just so you get a chance to see it. Uh, Roma tomatoes. So if we do some uh, some canning or some uh, sauce making. Boston pickling cucumbers. Now I did go ahead and plant a round of these um, for the end of the season. Um, um, right as my squash, a little bug, a squash borer bug, it kind of re resembles the, um, like a stink bug, but a little smaller, and it has, uh, like this sucker mouth part that pokes through the stem, and what it does is it sucks out the, the nutrients from the plant, and it ends up killing it off. Well, that happened to the older squash, and then all the zucchini and the cucumbers that I planted, these bugs were invading them. So I didn't go ahead and know it at the time, but I have a couple different kind of home remedies that I'm gonna definitely try this coming season so I can hopefully avoid any issues. A bell pepper. The peas did a great job for me this season. <laughs> Thank you, garden lady. <laughs> so see, I got you on my phone too. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the jalapeno peppers. I went ahead and I'm over seasoning or over wintering the jalapeno pepper plant, and it's doing fantastic. 
it's grown probably about a foot at my grandfather's house. Um, he has these little sheer kind of curtains and it's grown above that now. So it's, it's doing great. Carrots. The carrots did excellent for me this season. Um, so I'm looking forward to that again. More flowers, marigold. So I want to kind of plant these all over the, you know, near and around the garden. Mammoth sunflower. I planted actually some of the sunflowers. Um, I picked up those and from Haas, the chocolate cherry and this autumn, uh, autumn beauty mix. This one looked cool. I took a couple pictures and put it on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I got that. I have a Northeast, uh, yeah, I'm live trailer boy. Woo. Um, I got this, uh, Northeast wildflower mix. So like I said, this, this is going to be the year of the flowers for me. Um, ah. I can't pronounce this and it's backwards. Uh, nasturgeum or, uh, but, um, it creates like a kind of a flat round greenish flower and, um, or petals and it has different colored flowers that was really really neat uh, to grow and I believe they're they are edible <laughs> the Cuban pepper plant uh, <laughs> two brown sticks oh shoot well hopefully um, if if the roots survive I had some trouble outside uh, where the rabbits went ahead and chewed up uh, two of my pepper plants, the jalapeno and a red bell pepper. I just left them and then they came back. So I'm hoping, uh, I hope the best for you. Like I said, I would leave it in there for now. This Rutgers um, tomato. And then, so this was all from the little seed shop and a Brandywine tomato. So I gave a couple jalapenos to a guy that I work with. I said, the only thing I need you to do, take out the seeds, give me some seeds back so I have, have them. Well, he says his wife throw them away, so he ordered me seeds. The sweet banana pepper, a Seriano chili pepper, the jalapeno pepper, and then another sweet banana pepper. So I'm guessing you want sweet banana peppers this season. So I'm definitely going to get it in there. My parents are doing a gardening and a lot the last couple of years. Yeah, I, this this was actually pretty cool for me. Um, I did gardening years ago uh, with my father, and then uh, basically for the last five years I haven't done anything with it. And kind of with the pandemic when it came on, I went ahead and uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I'll bring them down. Uh, I went ahead and uh, I got into it and I just jumped right in. Um, my brother has the raised garden beds down in Virginia. I'm hoping to get down there. We want to extend his uh, raised garden bed um, and do some other things. So what I just went through, that was the first set of seeds that I got from that little shop of seeds. I ended up getting another pack. But before I do show you those, I went to the Dollar Tree they have amazing deals there. If you guys haven't checked it out, go to the Dollar Tree, the Jute Twine, 180 feet for a dollar. So I got two rolls, this little uh, seed. <laughs> oh yeah, I got you, Mike. We'll get together, bud. We got this, uh, uh, this twist tie, and it's got its own little cutter. Very cool. And then, <clears throat> Everybody's been going crazy with these planters. So, of course, anything I do, I do big. So, I got a bunch of them and they're stackable. So, I'm going to take some to my grandfather's and give some to my brother too. Uh, so, we can go ahead and, and kind of plant a little vertical garden out too. Yeah, the Dollar Tree, well, I'll get into it in a second. 
but I, I got a whole bunch of seeds from them too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody's showing me all their seeds and then I'm going out and I'm getting seeds. Anybody that's near me, I'm actually gonna uh, do a little seed swap with a friend. <laughs> yeah, the twists are great. I'm doing a little seed swap with a friend. She just got into uh, gardening. She did a raised garden bed this year and she picked up like 15, 1500 lettuce seeds and stuff. So she was, oh yeah, I'm addicted. It's a problem. <laughs> so she's doing um, uh, the lettuce seeds and she got something else. I can't even remember now, but she's going to give me some seeds. And I told her, I said, I got plenty. I'm going to give you some seeds too. So Swiss chard. This here is a is an awesome, awesome plant. If you don't grow it, you got to try it. Um, we had four inches of snow the one day, and then we got a little rain, and it kind of melted, and I, I knocked the snow off of it, and it was still growing and doing great. So that's, that's a very good one for me. This one here I already planted, the noble spinach. It did not do a good job germinating for me, but that could have been me the timing that I planted it. So I'm gonna definitely uh, try to get that a little better this coming season. I'm telling you, I went crazy. I got watermelon, Congo watermelon. These watermelon are supposed to get about this big. So, uh, and I know the worms, they're gonna love the, the watermelon. So I'm gonna plant a couple off to the side and kind of let them go, go crazy in where the pool area used to be. The Black Beauty Zucchini. I didn't get any this year because of the, that uh, squash borer bug. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to getting some. The plants started getting bigger and looking good and then they just all died. And um, as I was going through, I would see them. So I'd either flick them off and I'd kind of mash them up so they would stop doing it. But at that point it was already too late. It was pretty much all the way through the season. So the Brandywine tomatoes again. Um, like I said, I went crazy. Rutgers tomatoes. And the little shop of seeds. These seed packs, 55 cents. 55 cents. You can't beat it. And um, it's flat shipping for the package. It was, I think, 480. So if you're ordering like 20 seeds, you know, 20 packs of seeds, it, it does a great job. This is the Rainbow Swiss chard. This is the one I got written open. This is the one I planted and it did spectacular. So I've went crazy buying um, Swiss chard this season. White Icicle Radish. Um, radishes did very well for me this season. Another watermelon, the Sugar Baby. Oh, so my brother, my brother texted me earlier. Yeah, so, um, sorry about that. Did you get anything exotic or unusual? Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, I can't remember. Uh, this is just regular eggplant, uh, French breakfast radish, um, well, this is a, a new one for me, the leek, an American leek. I never knew what to do with my Swiss chard. Yeah, the um, so with the Swiss chard, there's a few things that you can do with it. If you harvest it young and early, the leaves, you can add it to, um, to like your salads and it's great. If you end up letting it get larger and it kind of has more of that stem, you chop that up and then you can actually cook it like, a, um, like asparagus. And um, I haven't tried that one yet. I've just added it to the salad, but I've heard a lot of people, they, they really enjoy that. Here's another open one, the Crimson Radish. Crimson Radish did great this season for me. The Artichoke. So I'm gonna try Artichokes this year. We, uh, sometimes when we go out, we get it like an Artichoke uh, spinach dip 
and that's normally awesome. So I got a lettuce mix. The mixed lettuce is pretty good. Um, I like that because you're getting a few varieties mixed in there. Um, I've grown Boston bib and regular leaf lettuce so far, and then the this other mixture lettuce too. And I kind of like the mixed lettuce better because you get a little bit of everything in there and it's great for, for your salads. The beets, Detroit beets. Beets did really well for me this season too. <clears throat> the Boston bib. Playing obsessed. Oh. Kimchi. <laughs> Hey, it's all good. Oh yeah, I've got tons and tons of peppers. Yeah, I, I've I've went through a bunch. I've got the Rucker's tomatoes, uh, Brandywine tomatoes. I've uh, gone ahead and started showing. I went to the little shop of seeds, 55 cent packs, great, great value. And you can see these, these seeds are, are packed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, blue curled kale. Very cool. Um, kale did really well for me in the beginning of the season before it got hot. Um, my brother even even showed me when I was down visiting. Uh, he would make uh, kale chips. So put put your oven on about 350. Spray your pan with a little uh, like oil cooking spray. Lay out a few uh, sheets of the um, the kale leaves. Put it in maybe about I think about seven minutes. Give them a quick flip, put them back in. So after about 15 minutes, oh my gosh, they were they were spectacular. So I started doing that. Oh yeah, sweet price on the uh, 55 cent seeds. I got another pack. This is Swiss chard from the Little Shop of Seeds. <clears throat> Ham some tomatoes, and you can see that they pack them. You know, great great value. Uh, my green leaf lettuce so I'm definitely going more lettuce this season um, my grandfather's going through a couple issues and he was just diagnosed with diverticulitis so he has to be careful with tomatoes and um, anything that has either a tough skin or seeds um, so tomatoes have seeds cucumbers squash zucchini so he has to watch that but what I kind of started doing for him at the end of last season is I would peel the squash or the lettuce or geez, the squash or the uh, cucumbers and then take a spoon and scoop out the seeds. So if anybody does have diverticulitis or an, an irritated uh, system that can't handle the seeds, think about scraping out the seeds so you can continue to enjoy the fruit and vegetables that you like. So I did order this asparagus, the seeds. I know seed asparagus takes a long time so what I did too is I ordered some bare root asparagus, some bare root strawberries, and horseradish. So I'm looking forward to, to planting that. I love horseradish. I love being able to mix it up, mix it with a little mayo and uh, maybe a little ranch dressing or something, make like a horsey sauce. Awesome. Oh shoot. Fruits and vegetables should I grow for the garden for Lana's baby food? <clears throat> well, what I'm <laughs> I'm liking for that is uh, MI Gardener. They actually have a baby food kit on the online, and I'm going to probably order that for you. It has different greens and vegetables that are good for the beginning of the season and then later on through the season so then you can just mash up the the fruits and vegetables fresh for um so i'll be getting that for you jack yeah the, the biggest thing for me is with the way it's kind of going with all the preservatives you're better off if, if you can make it fresh at home that's that's like i said that's why i'm going kind of overboard with all these seeds and salad stuff here we go. Here it's for plant obsessed. The Ponderosa tomato. And I know she was looking for um, Ann over at Plant Obsessed. She was looking at the an orange tomato. Um, 
I can't remember the variety of it, but um, I didn't I didn't go with any orange ones. Uh, I think I have a Cherokee purple coming um, that I ordered through Baker Creek Seeds. I wanted to get a pink with green vines or green veins, but they actually already um, that was all sold out. So I'm looking forward to uh, I, I'm on like the waiting list for that. Okay, oh, it's starting to go too fast for me, Mike. <clears throat> Growing sprouts over the winter, yes. Um, I actually had a cold frame, but the last snow messed it up. You can grow, and I have Swiss chard out there right now, so you can grow like your Swiss chard, some kale, lettuce, um, radishes are, are very cold hardy, um, beets, and what you can do is trim the, trim the leaves off when they're small, and then you can add that into your salads. Ever bearing spinach? No, I have not heard of that. Orange ox heart. Yep. <laughs> um, the the ever bearing spinach that sounds great because I know a lot of uh, people have problems with it bolting when it starts getting hot. So I will definitely have to look into that. Garden and worms. Yep. So uh, another pack. This one I had open, I could see a little dirt on there. This was the Black Beauty Zucchini. <laughs> Another finger carrots. And then Nantes carrots. So these carrots, I believe, were a little longer. The, the finger carrots are a little uh, kind of stubbier. Um, so that was the second set of seeds that I got from the Little Shop of Seeds. I got a problem, people. I really do. <laughs> What kind of pesticides and fertilizers do you use? I do not use any pesticides or fertilizer. Well, fertilizer a little bit, but pesticides on the garden right now, I have not used any. And that was kind of what one of my biggest problems. I wasn't able to control aphids, um, the squash boar bug, um, caterpillars. Oh my gosh, they went crazy on the kale and then, and then uh, cabbage worms. So, so this season I've been, I've been looking for, uh, once again, I hate spraying nasty chemicals. So, um, <laughs> so I hate spraying nasty chemicals. Um, I actually, I work for the state of Delaware and, uh, I was spraying herbicides and, and things like that. I don't want to spray that in my garden. So, um, basically the, the container like I use for the worm bin, just like a regular 32 ounce spray bottle, uh, mixing a tablespoon of vegetable oil, a teaspoon of like Dawn dish soap, and mixing the rest up with water should do a great job in terms of, of taking out aphids and pretty much any other you know little critter. So I'm kind of going more the natural route with that. Um, fertilizers, I have the worm castings now. Um, so that's not like a real potent fertilizer, but it's, it's a good kind of slow feed and release. Um, BT, I've, I've heard a lot of people using that. Um, I'm not opposed to using, um, any type of, of thing like that, but I just want to make sure that it's, um, you know, not going to kind of interfere or mess with the food. Um, diatomaceous earth, but I did not get the... Uh, food grade so all I do is I sprinkle that on the outside to kind of control and keep the the ants and things like that try to keep them out of the garden um, so let me see is that I'm just checking on my phone because I seen a few people yeah so back with the uh, the fertilizers so I have um, Basically, you have to pay attention to what you're planting. Um, like your tomatoes are heavy nitrogen feeders. So I have like a 10, I think 5-4 fertilizer for that. Um, your potassium and your phosphorus uh, need to go on more of the... Uh, go back a second. Lettuces, uh, kale, Swiss chard, yeah, lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, kale. 
Those are going to be more nitrogen feeders because they're getting big green leafy uh, leaves on it. So, um, so those are more nitrogen. Your phosphorus and potassium is, is more for your root development. So you, you really kind of need to know which ones, but I don't have too much. Like I said, I have a 10-5-4 feed, and that's more for my tomatoes. Yeah, worm tea. <laughs> so, um, so that, uh, I haven't gone too, too much into the worm tea yet, but with the worm bin, I'm, I'm creating more castings. Before the end of this past season, I, I had two uh, one-gallon buckets that I filled uh, with the with the uh, castings when I planted my garlic out I put a little garlic or a little garlic I put a little castings where the garlic is because garlic is a heavy feeder also um, I then when I started the seeds for my onions I had probably a half of maybe a third of a container left so I mixed that with the peat moss so the onions have a little uh, bit of the worm castings in there also and when I said about garlic I went to Mary's heirloom seeds I got the California early white and I'm going to try to say it but I might butcher it in chellum red and then also over here I marked I got an organic from the store the organic from the store is kicking butt it I have some sprouts that are about four inches high I just went ahead and mulched all that. Have you tried mulch? No, I have not. Oh, okay. Killing off the Japanese beetle. That's another, we have those around here. Um, when we had our pool, it would be, the, the skimmer basket would be filled with Japanese beetles. Okay, a little expensive, but 100% worth it. I would definitely, um, I'm all for you know, trying to find easier and better ways to do things. Black Spanish radish. I actually planted a few out in the yard or in the garden. My red burgundy onion. The yellow sweet Spanish onion. Now, germination wise, I went ahead. I'm, I'm, I was team yellow Spanish onion until germination happened and the red onions are kicking butt i think i have 100 percent germination on them the also works self-replicating mm. well, that's good um the red spanish or the red uh, burgundy onions are kicking butt all germinated and some are about an inch inch and a half high the yellow Spanish is very slow growing right now. Out of the 25 spots, I think maybe 12 have sprouted. So 13 haven't. That's like 50% germination. So I'm hoping that, you know, the seeds were either a little slow. I do have extra, so I might just poke them in the, the cells that don't have them yet. Luckily, I'm early enough with growing them. The onions it takes about eight weeks to get it to like an onion set size to then plant out in the garden. So, um, so I'm trying to get that together now. So I'll be good to go. How big is your garden? It was, I measured it last season because I put a little uh, chicken wire fence around it. It was 16 feet by 19 feet, uh, like a rectangle. So 16, 16, 19, 19. And then I got the daikon radish, the white icicle radish, and I already showed this, the black Spanish radish. So we're gonna be going crazy with radishes this year. Radishes and flowers. So I'm telling you people, I got a problem. Okay, flowers, go for it, Mike. Hopefully they win for you, unlike your eagles. dollar store four for a dollar I can't believe it so I went crazy I went crazy more more flowers marigolds the bush beans 
picked up some more hot peppers too. And then I went back and I got even more. Okay, looks like the, the thing keeps popping up the same questions a few times. Have any orange flowers? Uh, I, yeah, I remember you like your orange flowers. Probably in that, uh, that uh, Northeast mix. I bet you they are, there is. I don't think I actually got any orange ones off, off the top of my head. The sugar peas, the peas did great for me this, this year. And finally when the, the, uh, the pole beans started growing. Um, the pole bean, I planted two pole bean plants and it was, I think it was the end, middle or end of August. It was huge. It was, it was eight and a half, nine feet tall. So I snipped the, the top lead and then all the little side shoots, they started growing crazy. So then I was out there, I was like, okay, I'm gonna snip these so hopefully we can start producing some beans. Nothing ever happened. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting, you know, I was kind of getting a little perturbed with it. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to let you grow. Do your own thing. I walked out about mid-September. Beans everywhere. I probably got maybe seven or eight gallon bags of green beans this season off of two plants. It was crazy. Uh, 25 cents at the dollar store too. Okay. I will have to, I picked up, and I'm, I'm horrible with pronunciation, but the nasturtiums, I picked up a pack of them from um, the Little Shop of Seeds, 55 cents, and then I do have uh, a Dollar Tree kind of close by, so I'll, I'll definitely check it out, and if I get it, I'll, I'll let you all know. So, this one here is the head, and then this one here is like the leaf. I am a little bit more of a leaf fan than a head fan when it comes to the lettuces. Yeah, you'll have to get them definitely. Um, so with, I guess, with having the bugs um, and trying to let it grow to a full head, I just, I like the fact that I can go out there, snip a couple leaves off of everybody, and then I have a nice big bowl of salad ready to go. Um, the heads, I, I'm not, once again, I'm not, not going to grow them, but I just don't like the fact that I got to wait and, and hope that the head forms and then nothing gets in there, eats it or destroys it before I get to it. So <laughs> the other thing is, so I got some more squash or, or well, squash, zucchini. It's, it's a green squash. And then I picked up the straight neck yellow squash. Now, once again, beginning of this, this year when I was growing, I had no idea on the types of varieties, the crook neck, the straight, and all this. So I had crook neck squash, and I had four plants. We got over 20 squash from it. It was, they were awesome. Now, for, for the garden lady, they have these packs here. Okay, and look, you can see there's a, there's an orange radish in there. It's a variety, so you have like the white, you have the the crimson, you have the breakfast. So that might be a neat option there. Oh, gardens! <laughs> well, it saves you money as long as you don't go crazy buying seeds. <laughs> oh, jeez, I got a problem. So over here, oh, we got like the pickling cucumber. And then you're slicing cucumber. And then, like I said, kale and Swiss chard. So this one here is the dwarf blue curled kale. That's what my brother had. Um, I'm trying to remember the variety I had. Mine wasn't the, the dwarf type, I don't think. Um, so that that's the, the one set. This was... Another early one that I had that I picked up, I have the, the radishes, and then I went kind of crazy. I went with thyme, parsley, and basil. The basil did amazing for me. The other ones, they kind of started getting, get, they got to about two inches, and then they just kind of petered out. The basil 
I had, it was about a foot high plant. Um, and then I have some Shasta daisies. Yeah, so, and then my last dollar store trip. <laughs> uh, I was able to get a little bit more flowers though. So morning glory, a perennial mix. And then we got a little zinny action. There's there's some oranges in there. Got the cayenne peppers. This, yep, cayenne long. The breakfast radish again. These these did pretty well for uh, my grandfather. I planted them in some planter containers. I put a couple big rocks at the bottom, and then filled it in with uh, like a what the heck mix was it? I think I did my peat moss, a little vermiculite, and compost. And uh, that worked out really nice. It stayed pretty loose form, and then I even put a little kind of mulch on top, so it retained the moisture, and then he went ahead and was able to pick off a few of them. I got more lettuce. Say I got an iceberg, like a head, but then I went back. Like I said, the leaf, the leaf to me, is the way to go but with having those uh, dollar store planters I'm gonna I'm gonna tear these suckers up I'm gonna plan all all kinds of stuff and just let them go to town bunching onions so I have the regular bulb onions and then that so I can kind of use that more like a scallion I picked up more sweet corn this one here you got some oranges with the bell peppers so this is a mixed variety so it's pretty neat the um, the bell peppers to me I, I really enjoy them um, I've been spending some of the weekends up with my grandfather uh, well actually both the grandfathers they live a mile away from each other so I visit with the one then I head over to the other uh, grandfather and um, I'll make some eggs in the morning and I'll chop up some of the green peppers that we were having mix it with a little onions and uh, some ham, kind of like a western omelet. Awesome. I'm looking forward to trying cauliflower. Um, the broccoli that I had, we planted, um, they came from the store, a six pack already, you know, started. Um, and they did well, but I'm looking forward to trying cauliflower and broccoli um, this season from seed. I'm telling you, more radishes. If anybody's ever in Delaware, come on by. You can stop by the garden. We'll we'll go crazy, pick some stuff out there for you. More Swiss chard. So like I was telling with the garden lady, when they get large like this, that's when you want to chop them up and kind of do like a stir fry on the oven or, or cook it like you would asparagus. But the uh, when it's smaller, you can just take those leaves and grate for a salad. And then more carrots so I got that um, the order that I did for Baker Creek I still have my my little list here I ordered straight squash which I already picked up uh, spinach Swiss chard the Cherokee purple tomato um, I tried to order the Berkeley tie-dye pink that's the pink tomato with green stripes they were out of those um, so I did Give them the email so when they are available they'll send me you know an email to it the giant ozark um green pepper the roma 2 bean it's a bush bush bean green bean and the yellow pear tomato um i kind of like tomatoes that are a little sweeter so uh kate at heart and gardening she was talking about those and she actually said she didn't like them but with that I'm thinking it might be a little bit something that I do like uh, a little more and then also um, I was watching somebody they were talking about a tomato uh, relish with um, kind of like your sweeter tomatoes so that might be something that I try too we go through a ton of radishes the purple globe okay and that's a variety I haven't heard of big as a turnip Wow yeah haven't tried to grow a turnip yet either so um, I do have 
So I have that order um, at Baker Creek, and then I'm going to kill the name Gurney's. Um, that's where I'm ordering the asparagus roots, the, the strawberry root, the horseradish, and um, they have a, a deal, well, it's kind of a deal, it's $75 free shipping. Well, between those three, I was at $55 already, so I said, what the heck, I might as well throw another 20 bucks and, and get free shipping. So I ordered a bunch more seeds, I can't even remember what I got now, So, but when they do come in, I'll do a quick... Um, I don't know if I'll do it like this, like a live with it, or if I'll, I'll go about and, um, just do, just film it and then, then post it. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad everybody was able to stop by and check it out. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Um, like I said, this season's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Um, today it was only like 20 degrees out and Monday into Tuesday or Sunday into Monday, we're supposed to be getting anywhere from like six to 12 inches right now of snow. So we'll see if that happens with, I live in Newcastle County, Delaware. So if, if you ever look at it on a map, we have the C and D canal that connects the Chesapeake Bay and the Delaware river. So we have water on three sides of us. So there's sometimes you could be in Kent County heading towards Newcastle and it's not snowing, you cross the C and D canal and it's snowing crazy. Then there's other times when it's snowing crazy to the west of us in Maryland and it's doing nothing in Delaware. Then there's other times it's snowing crazy in Jersey and not doing anything in Delaware. So um, we're kind of like that 95 corridor. So sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. Um, back in 2010, we got walloped with two back-to-back 20 inch storm so it's kind of hit or miss with us but uh i'm glad everybody that was able to stop by and check it out with you know stop by and said hey and let me know you're watching um i really appreciate it and if we don't have anything else going on i'm gonna turn it off for now so thank you all for watching have a great night Thank you.